headlines in Hollywood are instance of alleged harassment after instance of alleged harassment in the industry. I'm curious about your thoughts on this. I never had that problem. I was always kind of like a tomboy and one of the guys. And um, I, I, I feel really sad for the women, but I'm happy that they're free. Everyone that's coming out, I'm happy that they're free because they had to hold on to a secret that they may have seen shrinks for for years and years and years. So I'm just happy for them. And, I'm, and I'm, I believe that this will, things will change because this is making other women say me too, me too, me too. And that's why it just keeps happening every day, every day. It will change things because people don't want to be in bondage anymore. Mm -hmm. You said you were a tomboy. Do you think you made that decision to shield yourself from I it? did because when, you know, I, I've been through so much as a child and a teenager I just started to turn, I just, you know, not that I was a guy, I just wore baggier jeans and Timberlands and hat turns, turned backwards so I won't, you know, be so revealing. It took me a very long time to even wear makeup and tight clothes mm. because I'd been, you know, through so much. And that, that I've been through, through has been a secret mm. that I still, you know, I mean, I, I exposed it on Oprah, but there's so much more that people don't know. Mm. And that has been a secret, those secrets I still have to deal with. So, um, like I said, I'm happy that these women are hopefully, you know, free because it hurts. I'm just happy that the people are being exposed and exposing other people. I think I was being prepared for this role ever since I was a little girl. My mom and my dad are Southern people. They came to New York in their 20s and they had me and I was born in the Bronx, so I'm a New York girl. But my mom sent me to Georgia, Savannah, Georgia, every summer. So my grandmother was this woman, Florence. My aunts was this, this woman, Florence. All, all my aunts and every woman in the South, they had this um, silent power. They, could, they didn't really say much, but you knew that they were powerful because of the way their men treated them and because of how everybody treated them. So that part of my life prepared me to be Florence. Florence was a silent, powerful woman. And when she spoke, her husband listened because she didn't say much. And she loved her family. So she was just this woman that really, really loved her family. And um, they didn't wear, you know, they were all stripped down. They didn't wear make, you know, things that we wear these days. And they didn't hang on to them. They just were free, 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 strong women. So that's what prepared me, of course, in the acting coach. <laughs> <laughs> you just come back. Well. You come all the way back. Yeah? I love you, Mama. I love you too, baby. My acting coach is one of my friends. So I was going through hell in my personal life, and I just ran over to the house, and I just threw myself on the floor and started crying. And she was like, this is what you do. She didn't baby me. She said, you take all of that shit. <laughs> and you put it, you give it to Florence. Mm -hmm. And I was so like, oh no, hug me, do something. <laughs> and I had to pull myself together and just give everything to Florence. So that's, that was the first thing I said to her, like, help me, I'm going through mm -hmm. it. And she said, forget it, give it to Florence. Mm -hmm. And then I saw um, Mudbound at a Sundance. And when I saw the character, when I saw Florence, I just started crying because mm -hmm. it wasn't me. I was like, who was that? It was it was a character, so that was a moment for me where I was like, wow, okay, I've done something. <laughs> and then was it easier Gosh. for you to watch yourself on screen because it from, wasn't From you? that moment on, I was able to watch the movie mm -hmm. at Sundance. I, I, I sat and I watched the whole movie, but before my part came, I was like, look, your part, because <laughs> your part's coming. You sound oh, horrible you did sitting so next good. to her. <laughs> 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 I'm talking, everybody's looking I'm like, shut up, shut up. <laughs> but I'm trying to direct them, and it was like, when, when my part came, it was like, I was, I, that was that mm. completely directed to look at it, and I had to look at it, and it wasn't me. Have you watched it since, or have you only watched it the once? I think I watched it twice. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it was, that was cool. Because yeah. <laughs> I see Mary yeah. J. Blige in everything I do. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm so glad we got rid of her. <laughs> <laughs> When I watched Rock of Ages, <laughs> I was like, that's Mary J. Blige. <laughs> and you didn't know what you looked like because you never that's looked at footage that's of yourself. That's Mary J. Blige. Oh, that's awful. That's not supposed to be Mary J. Blige. It's supposed to be the character. Ready? OK, quiet on set. And okay. I look down the lens. Yeah. Let's do it. I'm Mary J. Blige. I'm Miss Stone. Allison Janney. Thank you for watching The Hollywood Reporter. Thanks for watching The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter on YouTube.